Hello everyone and thanks very much for joining me on Dean the Vaping Biker. Today we're going to be looking at the Hurricane V2. This is the third and final tank in my little series of tanks this week and this is the most expensive one of the three coming in at £175. So this one was sent on to me by Zap E6 and I'm really pleased they did because this allows me to really have a good overall view as to whether it's worthwhile spending that extra money or not. Now today's review is purely on this tank. It's not in relation to the other ones I've done this week. What I'm going to do is a fourth short video after this where I bring all three tanks together and let you know my thoughts over where's a good place to put your money. But uh, today what we're going to do with this one is we're going to have a cheeky little mouth to lung coil in it. We're going to come up top and vape it and then we're going to do a full lung hitting coil. Also what I want to do is one of the things that I've noticed people have had about with these uh, V2s online is the fact that the juice flow control tends to be a bit loose and spinny. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to show you how I can put this back together again so that doesn't happen. And uh, I've been using this perfectly fine and I certainly do not have any kind of spinning going on on there when I don't want it to so hopefully that little guide will help some people as well now uh, based on that this is going to be a fairly I'm hoping it's going to be a fairly kind of warts and all review um, and show you everything about it so it might be a little bit lengthy but hopefully you can stick with me I'll cut out various bits that don't need to be there probably much like this one anyway let's crack into it then shall we come on then so this is the setup that we get when uh, when you're buying from Zap E6 currently. Now what we've got is the box which we'll go through in a second along with the contents, the tank which we'll look at in a second, the insides which we'll look at in a second, and you do also get this uh, additional mini hurry cap, they call it, which is uh, just a nice little uh, bell cap sort of style to make it look very much like the Hurricane Junior that I reviewed some time ago. But that is certainly an option for you if you, uh, if you, if you like that idea, that does come with it i think it may be uh, not a permanent thing but uh, it does say launch offer on the uh, on the website there now then in the uh in the box itself, essentially what we've got here is just a whole bunch of instructions that you can read. This point is me undoing all of those for you for today, but they're there. Now then, what you've got in the bag of spares, along with some extra little, little post screws and bearings and bits and bobs and things. Let's, whoop, whoops, whoops. You do have these. Now these, if you remember the K-Fun 5 uh, review had mouth to lung reducers in them. We've got reducers in this bad boy as well. Let me just get this other one out so we can really see the difference between them. Now in the tank at the moment, I do have the tightest mouth to lung one going in there. Uh, but uh, these are the other two options that you do get as well. So you can see that this one is what that's where the post screw goes and this is where your air is coming up like a monster. You can see on this one it's much much smaller and the one that I've got in there at the moment is smaller still. Now that actually goes 5mm, 3mm and 2mm so you've got you do have quite a few little options going on there when it comes to the type of draw that you want to take but like I say otherwise in here we've got all manner of uh, all manner of spares and bits and bobs if you so want them now then let's go on to the main event am i gonna have to zoom out yes i am just a little bit right let's have a little look at this so this is the hurricane v2 and i think it's a really good looking tank i know it's not to everybody's taste but to me i think it's a looker now those of you that are eagle-eyed will notice that right here i've cracked the glass but we're going to be replacing that today with a uh, with a full rebuild which i think will be good so uh, just to take it down we do have a 510 drip tip at the top there um, this one is uh, nice and straightforward nice and simple nothing uh, nothing super exciting engraved on it or anything along those lines but it is there at the top here this is where we fill up so by undoing this oh I've loosened everything for uh, for getting everything apart <laughs> this top fill here which undoes very very easily by taking that cap off there you get that massive great hole to dump your juice into and i've not had any problems with that whatsoever and underneath at the bottom here what we do have is the airflow control ring now then one of the things to pay attention of see right here you've got a little slice going on that's your juice control and that's what you can move around oh like so 
Now this is a, th a thing that some people have had problems with. You can see all the way through there and the coil it because that's where the wick normally goes. Um, this is one of the things that some people have had problems with because when putting your tank back together, you can do it so this ends up super loose. And as you can see, mine has quite the amount of tension in there. So um, it all depends on how you, uh, how you do put this tank back together as to whether that ends up being too loose or not. But, uh, but yeah, so that's your juice control. And that's about as far as you need to worry about when it comes to regular everyday vaping. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it all apart and then we'll put it back together together so you can see how it all works out. Okay, so this is the top section of the tank all broken down. It looks pretty scary when it's in this kind of format, but uh, I'm going to hopefully help you understand how to pop it all back together again to alleviate any of the issues that you may have found with a number of, uh, uh, or you may have seen on a number of YouTube videos. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to use this tank protector. Now, these little dots here, these are going to be facing upwards the whole time. And underneath at the bottom, you can see that there is a little ledge there. Now the ledge there goes for the larger but thick o-ring. Out of these three o-rings there's a slightly smaller thick one, a larger thick one and a large thin one. And so what we're going to do is the larger thick one and we're just going to stick that in the, uh, in the bottom of this little tank protector here and that will sit nice and comfortably in the bottom there on that little ledge. Okay, so once that's in what we can do then is pop the glass. This is the unbroken glass. <laughs> we can pop that in over the top of that like so. And then once that's there, the key here is to pop this thin one over the top of, uh, of everything else. Once you've got that over the top, that is going to help your life massively. So it doesn't have to sit in anything or on anything, just sort of pretty much on top of the glass, in between the glass and the uh, and the um, uh, protector there. Now, once you've done that, this section with the threads facing upwards goes right through the middle, like so. Once that's done, we can then pop this top section on here. That goes into the barrel protector. Oh, I'm doing this all cack handed. If you find that it doesn't sit in there overly comfortably, all you've got to do is just unscrew that, make sure that that top o-ring is seated pretty naturally, like in that one, you can see that it's right up against those threads there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that just down a little tiny bit so it's not in the way of the threads. And then we're going to screw this back on top again. Once that's all nice and snug like so, then what we do is we get the thicker but smaller o-ring and that goes over the top of that whole section there. Once that's done, what we can then do is we can then screw that into the top cap or the very top piece. And at this point, it's best to put your finger in here so you can keep that from spinning as you can tighten that up nice and snug. like so. Now if at this point you find that that inner chamber is really spinny and loose then all you've got to do is take it apart again and replace that top um, that top cap uh, sorry o-ring. Once you've done that then what have I done with the base? I know we're not going to look at the base quite yet until we build on it. Once you do pop your base in there like so I can now move this and I can move the juice flow control and it's nice and got a fair amount of tension in there and doesn't spin just willy nilly. So that uh, that's not going to spin by itself. So I do have to consciously give that some kind of grief to make that spin. Once you've done that, obviously the, the, uh, the very top cap, you can get a smooth version of this, by the way, if you don't like the idea of having those divots in it, that pushes over the O-rings, screw that on like so, drip tip goes on. And wallop, that is your completed tank. Obviously, the deck needs to be done, but uh, but yeah, that's how you assemble the top cap whilst keeping that juice flow control nice and snug. Now, what I would do is I would I would turn it clockwise because that just means you're going against the threads the whole time, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't kind of loosen anything up or anything along those lines. But that's no hardship and uh, and quite easy to use. So there we go. Now let's get on to the build section. And here we are with the deck for the, uh, the you can see, Swiss-made Hurricane V2. Now, this is just a cheeky little uh, 
Canthal 28 gauge spaced coil going over the top of there which I've been using for mouth to lung. You can see the reducer in the middle there is the smallest one and I'll offer them up side by side. However what I do want to do before I do anything else is I'm just going to wick this and then we will uh, we will get a little test going so a little bit of a headshot so I can tell you about my experience on mouth to lung and then we'll come back and I'll put a much bigger chunkier build in here as well. Right let's get this wicked. So that is the 1.2 ohm coil in the Hurricane V2 at the moment. I've got that smallest reducer in there and I've tightened up this airflow so there's pretty much nothing open whatsoever. But let's have a little toot on that one at 15.5 cheeky little watts. Let's have a go. Now then, obviously, as we're getting a uh, proper mouth lung experience, you can even you can even take that even tighter. Let's just have a go at that one. That is proper tight. Proper tight. <laughs> now that to me is proper mouth to lung tightness, and uh, yeah, I mean you can get a very very good vape from this. Now then, I'm using the Kokomo that I've used from uh, with all the other tank reviews this week uh, because I think it's only fair to be able to really get, share them or share the same juice amongst all of those to really figure out which is getting the best flavour. And it's a tough one. But with this one, I am getting, I'm, it's very sweet. I'm getting a lot of the sweetness come through. But at the same time, I'm getting a hint of that tobacco, which I think is quite cool. That to me, once you dial in that uh, that airflow, because it's literally a nan's chuff, a, a nan's, <laughs> a nat's chuff between um, getting the uh, the 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 real tight mouth to lung and a and a sort of a slightly looser mouth to lung. That makes no sense. I know that when I'm saying it. The words seem good in my head, but didn't do too well coming out. But that is a nice mouth to lung experience on that 1.2 coil, right? Based on that, let's go down and see what else this bad boy can do when it comes to the uh, wide open coil. Let's do that. Come on in. And here we are back again with the deck. Now I've taken out that little spaced coil just so you can have a good old look at the deck and you can see how we change out these post holes. Now once again, when it comes to these holes, you can see that this one is just massive and then this one is a little bit smaller and the size is once again a 5 mil. 3 mil uh, and 2 mil so that's going to give you your different uh, air restrictions now what we're going to do is put the biggest one in and I'm going to put the uh, a chunkier coil in here so let's get started with that one first of all what we want to do is we want to take the screw out of the positive post because that whole positive post is getting uh, taken out so let's get that one off like so once we've done that then we will that what we want to do is we want to take out the uh, the positive 510 that should unscrew fairly easily but just be careful for any insulators or o-rings that are in this bad boy as well because if you lose them they are a sod to try and find in your carpet i know i've been there but there you go you can see that we do have o-rings kicking over in there once you've done that your um, positive post will come out nice and easily. Now then what you need to do is need to take this insulator out of this positive post which can be a little bit snug I'm not gonna lie. Right now that's taken those apart you can see that I've given that a little bit of welly to get that done. Now one of the things I would like to see in the spare packages especially because of the extra posts are more of these insulators. Another one of these just in case you do break it because it's so so tight getting off the post that uh, it is quite plausible that you could knacker that insulator right there. So yeah, I would like to see a, another one of these in the spare package, please, E Phoenix. Once you've done that then, all you've got to do is place that back on top of the chosen airflow that you're going to go for. Smush that right up to the top like so. Get your deck again, pop that back in. Give that a little bit of a fiddle. Line up your posts. Like so. Then replace your 510 pin. 
So we're in there nice and snug and you can see that that is pretty much there. That could do with maybe a little tiny tweak just to get that exactly straight. Once again, one of the things that a lot of people are doing these days, which I would like to see on a V3 Hurricane, is to have little notches. So this sits in there nice and comfortably and absolutely sits exactly sort of directly opposite the, uh, the other one nice and straight because occasionally you can twist that around just a little bit when tightening so yeah I, that is something that i'd like to see just in the future just as a nice little kind of a nice to have you know right once you've done that then your post screw back goes back on like so and you can now see that we have gobs of airflow going in from that side there so that is uh that is going to give us a few cloudy fun times now then let's get a build in here shall we the build I'm going to use today is going to be a spaced dual core canthal coil. It's 28 gauge dual core with 38 gauge canthal on the outside. So it's going to be a nice chunky Clapton. Now it's not spaced overly well. I kind of pulled it a little bit too hard, but I wasn't going to make another Clapton coil. So one of the things that I like to do with this, and I don't know if it's a thing or not, but obviously a lot of people will pop their coils in up, uh, you know, the right way up. So the coil faces upright. Now, the thing that I find with that is that's that's pretty far away from the airflow, as you can see there with my dodgy holding up. That's pretty far away from the airflow. So what I've been doing is I've actually been turning my coil upside down and, uh, and getting it in like so, and then repositioning it so it's much, much closer to the airflow, which I'll show you when we get into it. All right, so here we go with the coil that I've installed. You can see what I mean by putting it in upside down. I think it just gets that nice and extra bit closer to the airflow. Unfortunately, it's not the tidiest coil I've done, but uh, it'll have to do for tonight, to be honest with you. Um, all fires up, all nice and lovely. Let's get that glowing nice and red in there. And there we go. That's glowing like a good one. And we've got a cheeky reading of 0 0.72. So uh, based on that, let's get into wicking this once it's cooled down. So what I'm going to use now is Cotton Bacon V2. This was also sent on to me by Zap e as well. Now what I've done is I have rolled some of it up into my hand there, into a little kind of cylinder. And now what we're going to do is just place it through the coil. Once you've got your cotton in there like so, then the next part we need is this section of the chimney. This just unscrews to allow us to put the uh, the cotton in nice and easily. Now the best thing to do is before you cut this all up is to just lift it up like so. And I did a very similar kind of wicking when we did the Hurricane Junior. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to have these sort of cut out divots either side of your coil like so. You're going to press that down. Once that's in place, you then want to give this a little bit of a cut and I'm going to cut it a little bit wide, pull it through a little bit more. So we're cutting just outside of the, uh, the base there. Once that's done, lift it up underneath with a tiny, tiny screwdriver, give it a little fold over and then pop it all down. Once you've got your cotton in there, I've possibly got a little bit too much on this side, but I'm not going to worry about it for the time being. All you've got to do is screw this top piece on. And that's giving you your little wick holes. Now, once you're at this position, just make sure that you've got a couple of things happening. First of all, that your wick is fully kind of covering the uh, the hole and you've got no kind of exposed bits there that juice can get through and then flood your tank. And also make sure that you don't have wick protruding from this side because that uh, that juice flow control will pull it out even further if you do. Once you've done that one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top out again. You can juice it up before you check it, but I just like checking it first. Make sure this is all super juiced up. Pop this back into the tank again. I'm going to make sure that the juice flow control is covering the wick holes. You can see that there is a wick hole under there. I'm going to make sure that that is fully covered by the juice flow control. Once you've done that, all you've got to do is unscrew the top section. Hold on to the uh, piece just above the knurling there. Unscrew the top section. Pull that off. Squirt your juice 
Once you've got the amount of juicy you want to pop in there, then just close that top cap and screw it down again and you are good to go. Open up your, uh, your juice flow and away you go. Right, let's pop this on a mod and go and vape it. So that was me putting in the spaced Clapton coil like you saw in that up close. Now I'm running this with the air fully open. I've changed the drip tip just because I prefer a little stumpy, a little black jobby on the top of there. Um, and I think it looks a little bit cooler as well. Um, this at 33.3 watts. This little E Petite has come through at 0 0.7 ohms. The airflow is wide open. Let's have a toot. And considering what kind of tank this is aimed at, I think that's quite an airy little draw, and it's a very smooth draw as well. I do like that a lot. However, if you do close that airflow down, maybe halfway, so it's a little bit more in line with what you've got when you come to the uh, the deck hole, the deck hole. <laughs> Cheeky. Let's have a little toot now. That to me really does enhance the flavour, but I do think it does make the tank just a hint on the whistly side, just a hint there. But uh, the flavour I think is great. The RY4ness of the uh, Kokomo from Coil Vapes is really coming through. Um, and I'm getting a really nice experience with that one. Now obviously you can close the airflow right down on here as well to get that kind of mouth to lung draw, but uh, it does get lost a little bit in that deck hole. <laughs> again deck hole uh, and so that's why you do have the reducers available to you um now i kind of like this maybe three quarters of the way open and uh, rocking it just as i am now that's a nice unrestricted airflow bags of flavor going on there and working out like a trooper now hopefully the idea of showing you guys how to rebuild it um, especially with that little tiny o-ring or the little the thinnest of the large o-rings just sitting on top of that glass section um, and how it stops the the uh, juice flow from being super loose um, i mean my juice flow now is is not loose at all i can sort of do that to it and it's not moving it's doing nothing so uh yeah that's that's how you rebuild it and the big thank you goes to Simon McDermott for that one. First of all, um, he's done a video on the ePhoenix Facebook page, which uh, also shows that, and, and that's where I got that, uh, that information from. Um, and also, Simon also sent me through the replacement glass. So a big thank you, Simon, for that one. Um, now, all in all, I think this is a cracking tank. I really, really do like it. I think the variety it comes with is great. Now, one of the things that I did wonder was, I think it would be better with one slightly smaller um, uh, uh, hole for the uh, for, for that deck piece, rather than having the 1.2, was it 1.0? No, 2.2 millimeter. And I believe that they are actually producing a 1.2 as well and I think that is going to help no end I really do um, I think that's going to help with the mouth to lung vapors a massive massive amount now I've not shown it to you with the bell cap on because it looks exactly the same as the hurricane junior did um, and uh, I've already reviewed that so I'll put a link to that in the description as well uh, now based on that one of the things that I haven't got with this that comes with the hurricane junior is an extra sleeve for the for the so the uh, the, what's it called? Barrel? Barrel? Let's go for the barrel that uh, encapsulates the deck um, that you can control with your or use as a juice control. Now, I didn't get that with this one. However, I think uh, vaping with Vic, I think with Richard, he with his, I think he did got one, get one. So I think, I, unless I've lost mine, um, that mine may have been a one-off. However, I believe, according to the Zap E6 website, that the additional mini hurry cap is just a, uh, a, a launch offer thing. So whether that's going to be an ongoing thing or not, I couldn't tell you. So uh, that may not be an issue for some people. However, if you're using high VG juices and you get plenty of wick in there, then uh, you don't really have to worry about it most of the time anyway. I generally will tend to rock this wide open most of the time. 
I've had no leaking from it. I've had no flooding. Um, I've had no uh, no issues with it whatsoever. Yes, there is a lot of moving parts to it. There's when you're putting it all back together. There's a lot of O-rings, and once again with that top thin O-ring, I believe they are also making um, making that a little bit easier moving forward as well with an additional type of O-ring or seal that goes on the top there. But uh, don't quote me on it. That's only something that I've been told. I haven't seen that in existence as yet. But uh, uh, that will uh, that will help stop these people that have the issues with the with the loose juice flow control. But you can build it to make sure that that doesn't happen anyway. Like I said, I've had no leaking issues. I've had no resistance issues. I've had no uh, no problems filling it up. I've had no I've just had no problems with it at all. And in fact, when my hand was particularly rubbish a couple of weeks ago when I first got this, I couldn't rebuild. Excuse me, I couldn't rebuild one of my tanks because I couldn't undo the uh, juice. Oh, windy pops! I couldn't undo the juice flow, but um, I managed to rebuild this entire thing pretty much one-handed because everything was nice and easy to get together and nice and easy to use. So that certainly makes it makes me very very happy with it. Like I say, filling it up super easy, juice flow control super easy. All in all, I think it's a very, very good tank. I think it's machined incredibly well as well. So um, all the threads I've had no problems with whatsoever. That top one where you put in the, uh, the, the fill cap kind of business going on, that seems a little bit funky to start with, but that's generally just because that O-ring right at the top there hasn't been juiced up and lubricated. Once that's done, then it's nice and easy to plonk on your top cap, screw it up, and make sure that everything seals properly. But like I say, no problems at all. All in all, I know this tank is a lot of money, and it's not going to be on the table for a lot of you, but uh, I think it's actually bloody, bloody good. Now then, how does it compare to the other two that I've reviewed this week? You're going to have to wait until the next video, I'm afraid. But uh, today it's been all about the Hurricane V2 from eFenix. Thank you very much to Zap E6 from sending, for sending this on. And uh, that's all I can tell you guys. Thank you very much indeed. I will see you. Did I tell you the price? Did I tell you the price? Sure I did. It's $174.99. Yeah, I know. But it is very, very good. Anyway, I will see you on the next one. Thanks very much for joining me. I've been Dean the Vape and Biker. This has been the Hurricane V2. And I will see you tomorrow. Or maybe even later tonight. We'll see how we go. Have a very large.